This is part 12 of my Python game engine programming tutorial series. And then in the previous lesson, we had added an object to this empty location here and made it fire. But you notice, because they all were adding simultaneously, they kept colliding with each other and blasting off. So we really couldn't tell that it was actually moving off in the negative Z direction, which was down, or the negative Y direction, which is down that way. Okay, so instead, one of the things you can do is instead now notice all these other events I've had in here. It's, I use the keyboard event Blender Game Engine dot logic kx underscore input underscore active, and I briefly mentioned it before, but now I've just changed this to be input just activated. So look at the difference: input active versus input just activated, like that. All right, what well, that'll do? That'll just uh, prevent you from holding the key down and having it continually blasting, which maybe you want to do, but for now, this will just only put one at a time and send it down there. So I'm going to put that in and, and project it down like that. And then I also went in and this object was static. And every once in a while you would see it flying away. But So now I've turned that into a rigid body. So anytime this gets added here, it should send it down there and then it should not interfere with it because you're just pressing the keyboard each and every time. So let's go into here and let's start the simulation. And I press A. All right, so there it adds it to the scene. Well, uh, look at that. I don't know what happened. Look at that one thing went going. All right, so each time now I press, and if I just hold the keyboard the key down like this, it doesn't do anything. It only does it each time I press the key. So kind of like the way you see the games. Just the faster you press, the more you can blast in there like that. Uh, well, maybe maybe we want that other object in there. Let's see. This one is there. Let us maybe better turn this a different color so we can differentiate between the two. That was like a turquoise. Let's make that red so we can really see the difference between them. All right. And then in this case, I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to place an empty here. Add empty. And there's an empty. I'm going to kind of line it up with this one as well. This is just kind of a little practice so we can get used to doing it. And I'm going to give that a name. And I'll call it empty projectile. This, did I get an E up? Yeah, that's okay. Easy. I'll call that empty projectile too. And what is the name of this? This is Icosphere. Oh, we'll leave it that. We'll leave it as Icosphere. Like that. But I'm going to take Icosphere now. I'm going to move Icosphere off into another layer as well. I'll move it over into layer two so it's not in here. So that's empty projectile two. So let's, we'll put it a little further in the scene, but we won't apply a force to that. So, but what will happen is it, this will come in, we'll have a force applied to it, and we'll be placing this in the scene simultaneously down here. So we'll just keep adding new ones and keep hitting them as they get added to the scene. So let's go back to the code. And then here we add the object. We'll just keep it simple. When you use kind of simple names or common names, then it's easier just to fix it. That other one was called Empty Projectile 2, and we'll call this one Icosphere. And that was the name of the object. And I'll just keep it common, and I'll also call it Icosphere here. It could be anything else. You could call it Target. In fact, that's if I was probably writing a game, that's probably what I would do. I would change the name of that one to target and this to target. And, and then, oh, I don't need to apply a force. I'm not going to apply a force to this one. So just so we know what that is, I'm going to say add a target to the scene. And then up in here, I'm going to do this. Remember that code, got to keep that those comments in there, add a projectile to the scene, like that. All right, and we'll save that. Okay, so let's go back to the window and take a look. And so now, theoretically, we'll be adding that, and it should fire, and the other one will be there, and what we're going to find out. All right, press P, press A, and I get an error. All right, see what the error is. Whoops. Error is line 23, Icosphere key not in list. It's not, huh? 
that must maybe I had a typo. Let's go see what I let's go verify. There's that one. This one is called Icosphere. That one's called Projectile. That looks good there. And then this one was called Empty Projectile 2. And that's called Empty Projectile. So I must have a typo in my code. Let's see. I guess line 32. What's it say? Line. Oh, line 23, Icosphere key not in list. Line 23. Oh, okay. I already have one called Icosphere like that. So I was already getting the Icosphere object because I was using that down here, right? Where were we using that? Apply the movement with the mouse position. Right. So that's going to be the mouse position. So we'll bring this back into the scene, M1, and then go back into here, M1. So that's back in the scene, and I'll just, since we're using that for something else, I'll move that over there instead. And in here, I'll just place a new Icosphere. Okay, and I'll give it a name, and you know what, we'll call it Target, like that. And we'll move it to layer two. M2 like that. Then we'll go back into the code. And we'll come down here. And we'll call target. Target like that. All right, save that code. Go look into here. Let's run it. All right, so then, okay, so the last thing we forgot to do is need to make that target rigid body as well. All right, let's run it. Press A. There we go. So it adds them both in, and then it hits each time. There's as many times as you want to keep doing it. It just keeps knocking them out. Let's look at it from a different perspective here, like this. A. There you go. Gives you some more ideas. Every little bit helps. Okay, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.